Okay, I want to talk about the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge on the 4000 series machines. Um, this was a real common issue. People would buy these within, you know, 50 hours or so. Either the temperature was too high or the fuel gauge was wrong. And there wasn't really a good reason why. And, and really what happened was they would, they would replace the entire cluster, the entire gauge cluster, which which obviously is not cheap and you don't really want to have to do that if let's say your temperature gauge is running hot and the machine is not running hot, right? So if you think about it, uh, the gauge is wrong, but the machine's fine. You don't want to have to spend the five or $600 for a new instrument cluster just to fix that. And I'm going to show you how to fix that with um, putting in a, a, a resistor, inline resistor, either in the fuel gauge area or the um, temperature gauge uh, sensor wire area, right? So the way these work, it's really simple. There's a variable uh, resistor for either the temperature or the fuel. And based on how low or hot, how high the, um, the, uh, the sending unit is, meaning how cold or how hot in, in the case of the temperature uh, gauge, it's going to go from either you know 700 ohms when it's cold to zero ohms when it's hot let's say so that's all that's doing is it's variable resistance based on a condition and when it's the heat it's based on the temperature going up and it resistance goes down and then when it's the uh, fuel gauge when the float goes up the resistance goes down and the needle goes into a higher position so that's how that works it's it's really super easy it's a variable resistor based on the condition it's measuring, right? So with all that said, if you have a temperature gauge that's running hot and the engine is not running hot, um, then you can put a resistor in line to uh, compensate for the, the difference in resistance that you need to get the gauge back into the, into the range you wanna be in. So, so what you can do is you can take a resistor just like this and these, you can buy these online in a kit. You can get the kit and it goes from one ohms to uh, a million ohms, right? And there's, di there's different increments that you can, you can try. And what I find is that about two to 300 ohms, two to 300 ohms uh, resistance in line solves the issue in most of the cases, right? So if you, if you put this resistor now in line, in the line of the wire, for example, if you look over here, this is the um, this is the temperature wire that goes into the sensor on the block, right? And all I've done is put a 250 ohm resistor in line with that wire, even though it looks like I've done a lot more. It's just a couple uh, connectors. And all those connectors are doing is is holding that resistor in line. And now I've added 250 ohms to my variable resistor sending unit on the block, which which is gonna be what now the gauge is gonna settle in on in the medium range when it's running normal you know, normal temperature. So so that's pretty much it. Like you, you don't have to overcomplicate this. And, and the reason why these gauges go off is because there's windings inside the gauge that are supposed to be uh, wound a certain way. So when the voltage is a certain way, that needle should sit right in the middle. Well, what happens is the windings, either they short out and now it takes less voltage to move that needle uh, and, and that's really what's going on. So the gauge is faulty, the windings are shorting out, less voltage is now needed to, to move the gauge and the gauge goes into the hot and everyone thinks the machine's overheating. And, and this is the same thing with the fuel sensor, uh, the fuel gauge. People will see the fuel gauge and it'll be um, full and it runs out of fuel because it's not accurate and uh, like I said the easy fix for this is you just have to um, check the check the sensor and for the for the temperature sensor the the shop manual says normal range is 0 to 700 ohms so if, if you run the machine for 10 minutes and you're right in the 3 to 400 ohm range the machines running fine the sensor is fine it's your gauge, right? So if you, if you find that you put the ohm meter on it and it's it's hot, the engine's hot and it's all warmed up and you're getting like three to 400 ohms, that's perfect. That's right in the range you wanna be in. 
and when you plug in your uh, wiring and your gauge goes to hot, let's say it goes way past hot and it pegs over even where the gauge is supposed to be reading, the gauge is just wrong, right? The windings have shorted out and it's taking a lot less voltage uh, to make that needle go all the way. So that's what you wanna do. You can try that. These resistors, these inline resistor kits, probably less than $10 online. You get a whole you know, bunch of different ones you can try. That's what I would recommend. It'll save you a lot of time. And, and if you do it like this, you can probably fix your um, fuel gauge and or temperature gauge for less than $10 and maybe an hour's worth of your time. You're gonna need a multimeter to, um, to test the uh, the ohms right on your on your on your sense on your sending unit. So you test out the ohms. The shop manual will have the ohms for both the fuel sending unit and also the temperature sending unit on the block. Test those if they're good, everything's normal, and and you're comfortable doing this. I would just put the inline resistor in there and then uh, try it out and see if it works. That should probably solve your problem and you won't have to spend the, the five or $600 to change out the cluster. Keep in mind when you change out the cluster, the hour meter is gonna be uh, new and you're going back down to zero. So obviously now you have to worry about uh, the hours on the machine when you sell it, you've gotta explain all that. It's not really worth it in my mind. If you can do, if you can do this easy fix, I think you'd be better, uh, better off. And hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions on this at all, just reach out to my channel.